Hi, I'm Zohara, and this is The Soloist, conversation on soul, music, education, life, and many things in between. One of the things which I promised myself when I decided to come with this podcast is that I wanted to continue being um, honest, authentic. One of the things which I knew I wouldn't like to do is to edit, to check, go back, trim, cut, make more beautiful, add uh, lots of um, variations about soundtrack. I knew that once I start doing this one, I will lose my spontaneity. So I knew that the only thing that actually I will really have joy of talking to you will be the way I'm talking now. And I apologize in advance if it doesn't match the standards of some of our expectations of um, a few people. That's the best way I would like to communicate with you. And as I said in my first podcast, uh, why did I do it? Because I love talking to people. I love imagining that I've got lots of people here around me. Actually, the lots of is not true. If there's one person there, or if there are 100 people there, or more, or whatever, I will speak the same. I will speak from my heart. And if I don't have what to say, I will just put it on pause. Another thing which I promised myself is that I'm going to talk whenever I feel like talking. So I might sometimes wake up in the morning and feel like um, I'm going to record a few words. No, I'm not going to put it off. I'll do it now. And many times I have no idea even what I'm going to say. I just know that I would like to talk to you. And if it doesn't come, if nothing comes, which I feel is worthwhile to share, then I just won't send it. Other times I will plan what to tell you, especially if it involves announcement of uh, courses, um, other events, dates. If I, feel, if, I, if I feel that this is information that you might need to put in your diary, then I will plan it to make sure that I'm giving you the right dates and the right information. And other times I'll put my teacher hat and I will be very um, systematic with what I want to cover. That's one of the teacher's hat. How are you going with your lockdown? Do you feel locked? Do you feel down? Do you feel like solitude? Do you feel isolated? Do you feel lonely? Do you feel, ah, oh, at last I've got the time for myself? And more. I feel all the above, and I'm noticing how things go in waves. There will be moments or hours which I will feel one, and then there will come a few moments which another another feeling will come and i would like to make space in my being to all of them which will be easier for me to make space for all of them in the life of people around me or people that i meet on zoom i think that's the least we could do for ourselves allowing permitting, allowing voices that talk in our head to be heard, allowing feeling that we feel in our body, in our heart, in our mind, to be listened to, allow thoughts that go in our heads to be written, to be said, to be muttered, just to allow, I think allowing is a good place to be. 
and allowing also will give us the maybe the power and the skill to navigate through them. So if one of them is haunting, too painful, taking too much weight, too heavy for us, we can pause, take a breath, and say, okay, I hear you, but right now I had enough of it. So please come and sit here by my side and let's talk another time. I'll let you know. What I'm realizing is that many voices or many more voices that I used to hear in my head are coming, in, coming forward now because of the situation, because of the time we are living in. Also, many more memories are coming. Sweet memories, like I was sitting in front of the computer and the screensaver started running and I have on my screensaver, I've got photos. So photos from my previous trips, from my many trips, which I had this year, last year, a few years ago. And I felt such a deep sense of longing, such a deep sense of longing to these trips. And I was walking in the streets of Granada, sitting in restaurants in Madrid, sunbathing on the coast of Mykonos, going to a musical in Broadway. And as I was doing it, I was thinking, while I was there, did I really cherish every moment? I would say that in most of them, the answer was yes, I have cherished because I love my traveling I love traveling and meeting colleagues, people like-minded, sharing my work, my passion, my love. So yes, I would say in most of them, yes, I have cherished them. But I think if I knew then that in a few year years' time, I might not be able to fly anymore, or for now, I don't know what, what the future holds, but if I knew then, I might even cherish them more. And I thought, how lucky I am that I've got these pictures. But even if I don't have these pictures running on my screen, I still have all of these pictures in my head. And even more, I have all these pictures and all these flavors and smells and feelings and sensations in my heart, each and one of them. So it's like pulling out um, a video, a CD, a film, and to play it according to my choice. Last night I had a Zoom call with a friend from Israel dear Ruti, Ruti Litvin, and I wanted to check with her something. We shared where we are in this time of Corona, and I told her that I find myself much more busy than before. All the things which are opening of gathering with teachers, with parents, with soul seekers, with friends, with family, and needing to also remember, needing to remember that I need to put some time aside for, for myself, just to rest, or maybe to sit on the, on the, in the hammock or sit on the deck. And I do do it, but maybe I need a bit more. So we talked about this, and then I told her how privileged and humble I feel to have the opportunity to serve more people now. 
because like if before I, I was invited to a workshop or a conference or a convention and I met a big group of people, now because that we don't fly, I can talk with many more people at the same time. And there's some big, some excitement actually in me to be able to share the things which I love with such a big group of people around the world at the same time. So I don't have to go to New York and then go to Boston and then go to New Zealand and then go to Sydney and then go to Europe and so on. I just can talk to all these people at one time. And it makes me so excited, like, like, a, like a young child. And then I also told her that somehow it connected with a memory which I remember from a very, very young age. So all my life, since I was very little, I wanted to be a teacher. This was my dream. Actually, I had two of them. One dream was to become a mother, and the other dream was to be a teacher. And these two dreams were playing side by side. I, rem I do remember myself, and not just from the stories that my mother and grandmother told me, I do remember myself um, playing, pretending that I'm a mother, which I'm sure many girls do. And also I remember taking uh, toys and uh, things which I imagined they're toys and putting them in front of me and pretending that I'm the teacher. And I do remember that softness and gentleness and so much patience which I had towards the objects, the dolls and the pots and pans and lamps and books which I put in front of me. And I always made sure that I listened to them because I love being a teacher. When I became a teacher, when I graduated, and I got uh, my first job as a music teacher in a school, actually in three schools. There was one, of, one time which I, I think it was the first or the second day that I went out of the school and I was walking towards my car and I heard a voice calling behind me, uh, teacher, teacher. Actually in Hebrew, it's that teacher, Hamora, Hamora, Hamora. The teacher, the teacher, I did not turn my back because I couldn't imagine this is for me. But because this voice insisted, Hamora, Hamora, I looked back just shyly to see who is the teacher that is not replying to this call. And I realized it was for me. I was the teacher. I was the one. And I... As I'm telling you this story, I still feel these uh, currents in my body, the excitement, the disbelief that, wow, this is me. They called me the teacher. This has become a metaphor in many things in my life, many things which I always wanted to have to be to serve, to give, to act. And once I got to the, to the place and the stage of having them, I did not believe actually that they're there. So that was my question to Ruthie. I asked her, Is it, do you feel the same? Like when people tell you something about yourself and you feel, is this for me? Do they really mean me? She said no which made me reflect after we talked. I wanted to see where it all became, how did it all came about. I wanted to analyze and to go deeper into this place. I know that some of it came from not feeling good enough. And I know many people share this thing of not feeling good enough, of not feeling enough of not believing that what we have is enough for now. 
and I could go back to my past, to the way I was up, I was uh, brought up by my family, my culture, my people, and I know I belong to a big group of people who have the same experience and have had the same experience. So it came from really widening the picture and allowing more things, again, more things, more voices to come and to say, wow, I can hear all of you. And yes, I can make place and space to all of you. Why is this all connected to the times we live in? I think for me, and maybe for some of you, the times are really calling for a deep view of stock taking, of closing eyes and trying to go deeper, be behind things, beyond things. This is how I feel. So that's what I wanted to tell you, actually. That's the thing which I uh, felt was really unique to this time, even more so than usually. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you is, again, taking for granted so many things that I took for granted throughout my life. Waking up in the morning, putting my walking shoes and going for a walk. I can't do it now. So the truth is I haven't gone for a walk for, I think it's four weeks, since uh, we put ourselves in isolation or lockdown or social distancing or whatever. I never know how to call the situation I'm at. So today I was walking around my house in, my, in our yard. I didn't go out. And I was walking fast, one round, another round, very determined to make my heart work and to pump the blood into my heart. And at some point, I just could not resist it. And I opened the gate and I went out. The street was completely empty. There was nobody there. And I started walking a little bit, just a little bit down my street. And then I saw the neighbor. She came out of her home to bring back the rubbish bin. And from afar, she waved, and I waved back. And I was so happy to see her. I don't even know her. I've never talked to her. I don't even know if she's a neighbor. Maybe she's a guest. Uh, and she was um, calling, how are you? And I said, thank you. Now I'm so much better. How are you? And she said, good. And again, I felt like a small child that got a gift and it made me really happy. The little things that make me happy. Okay, I'll share with you the, a few moments of my current day. And I wanted to let you know that quite soon I'm going to start with an online parent nurture course. This is going to be, the first one is going to be dedicated to Suzuki parents who are going um, through, either who are going through difficult time, especially challenge, special challenges now. But the truth is this is, this is something that was um, aimed and planned for new Suzuki parents. But then I realized um, I can leave it open to everybody who wants to join. So watch the space. I'm going to announce it either today or tomorrow. Stay safe. Look after yourself. Keep well. And lots of love. Bye for now.